Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to today's sharing of Harmonize to Energize. For those of you who are new to this particular webinar, my name is Terry Matthews. I work here at the Scottsdale Jinshin Jitsu headquarters, which um, where I manage and also teach self-help classes and practice the art of Jin Jin Jitsu. So I hope you're all doing well. On our journey so far, we've reached uh, the second depth or the second bandwidth of energy. We're exploring safety energy locks five to 15. And today we're going to be looking at safety energy lock number 12 which in Mary's description came into the universe, meaning not my will, but thy will. Submission of personal consciousness to the direction of universal mind. If you put your hand close to the, to the back of the neck or go to the cervical vertebrae and pull away and you'll feel a couple of tendons there. It's just basically in between there, left and right. Don't forget, of course, the safety energy lock is the size of the width of your palm. So if you just place them like that, you're capturing the whole of the safety energy lock 12 area on mass. As you often know, um, in previous weeks, I've referenced Paul Foster Casey's book, The Tarot, because that's where Mary referenced a lot of her ideas. And I just want to read something from this book about um, the number 12. We talked about um, not my will, but thy will and submission to the, per, to the direction of universal mind. Well, Paul Foster Kay says, this surrender is the submission of the personal consciousness. And <clears throat> until we know that ourselves, we can do nothing. This total submission of the personal life to life itself makes us intensely positive in relation to other persons and in relation to the conditions of our environment. Nobody who follows this direction ever becomes a human doormat. Consciousness of the support of something transcending mere personal human power always results in positive mental attitudes. In the face of some of the appearances confronting us as we go through life, we need something more than just our personal energies to carry us through. In order to have courage and persistence in spite of seeming disappointments and difficulties, we must know ourselves to be vehicles of a power to which nothing can be an insurmountable obstacle. So let's have a look at the slides and we'll see exactly where <clears throat> Mary placed safety energy lock number 12 on the body. And here it is, as you can see, left and right of the cervicals, fairly close in there to the spine. But as I said, find a couple of tendons either side and just gently place your fingers there. You've got it. And this safety energy lock will help you releasing arm tension and stress, of course, around the neck. Mary also said that if your left safety energy lock is really tight, there may be some tendencies towards um, extreme behaviors. And if the right is very tight, there may be some mental, emotional confusion going on. You'll know for sure. Either way, we're going to hold them and we're going to practice releasing them. And the first technique that Mary actually shows us there is literally what I just did, holding them left and right. And then the second way of helping release safety energy lock 12 is holding left or right middle finger. And remember, when you're holding the fingers, to do a little bit of research to see which segment of the finger may be more tender than the others. This gives you some clue as to the area of your body which needs most attention at this time. So the first segment is bust line, middle, 
segment waistline and the bottom segment hip line. And then finally, Mary shows us this third technique here where she's using, in this case, the right hand to hold the, the left safety energy lock, uh, 12. And then the left hand is going on the coccyx base of the spine. So <clears throat> you can also reverse that. The left hand will go on the right, number 12, and the right hand on the coccyx. All right. So as those of you that have been following along on a regular basis will know that I practice opening safety energy locks using the 36 breaths practice. And this is four sets of nine exhalation inhalations. And we talk of the number nine, meaning end of a cycle, beginning of a new. So what could be better? We let go of what we no longer need with the exhale to build something afresh. And then as we inhale, we purify what we've built to let go of even more in order to rebuild again. So it's a spiral and a continuous spiraling process of letting go, building, releasing, purifying, building again. So exhale, inhale nine times, and we'll start with the first practice that Mary showed in the book, holding left and right safety energy lock number 12. And for those of you that are a little bit more experienced, maybe wondering um, what am I saying when I'm holding here? What am I experiencing when I'm holding here? Well, I'm waiting to feel a sensation of a pulse which is really the radial artery pulse of the blood. The blood in the body is following the energy, not the other way around. So what we're feeling is the blood pulse, but it's also following the energy pulse. So when we're holding them, we will eventually hopefully feel a pulse left and right, or just one or the other. And this tells us that the energy is transferring between these two places in a degree of harmony. So let's begin and just sit up as straight as you can. If you need some back support, put a cush behind your back or sit on a cush. Whatever you need to feel comfortable. No need to strain. As we exhale, we're relaxing. We're dropping our shoulders. We can bow our head slightly. That allows more energy to come into safety energy lock four, which is where we begin to allow the energy to drop. And as it drops it goes through safety energy lock 15 in the hip line through safety energy lock 7 and then back up 7 15 and in this case 12 and 4. so we're moving down the front up the back let us begin when we begin this exhale we can close our eyes to block out unnecessary information sensations and let go just let any thoughts, any ideas that are taking you away from the moment, let them go. And as you bow your head slightly and drop your shoulders, the energy sinks down and down. 4, 12, 15 and 7, which is your big toe, deep into the earth then returns from the earth back through the seven, up through the back of the legs, through the 15 and two, up the spine, through the 12, back to the four, and down again once more. Continuous cycle. Eight more times. Here we go. And no particular way of exhaling, inhaling, through the mouth, through the nose, whatever comes natural to you. And as we're letting go, we may observe some of the tension in those tendons, left and right, gently releasing, allowing us greater freedom of movement in our necks, relaxing any unnecessary thoughts. And as we inhale, we receive the cosmic purified energy, further purifying us 
as it moves up through the spine and the spinal centers of the main central in order for us to let go even more and build further in a more purified blueprint. Let it go in order to grow. We're expanding our consciousness. When we resist, we narrow our consciousness. We can't see the bigger picture. Let it go. Grow and expand. Purify and build again. Maybe you're noticing you're feeling pulses left and right, or maybe just on one side, doesn't matter. Energy is wanting to move, energy dances through the universe. When it's static, when it's stagnant, we're blocking our natural flow. And as we reach the ninth exhalation inhalation, we slip into what I call neutral, into the space which you could refer to as ninth depth. And it's in this space where transformation can take place. So just be the witness, be the observer of where you are, how you be. Maybe notice where in the body there might still be some resistance or not. And be happy with whatever you observe. Okay, so to begin the second cycle of nine exhalation inhalations, we can choose left or right middle finger. And the safety angel lock 12 can be harmonized holding either one. And I would suggest to get an extra boost of energy, you can place your thumb in the center of your palm of your hand. And place your hands in your lap, wherever it's comfortable, but over the center of your body there, in the groin area, the pubic area. Sitting up straight, relax, drop the shoulders and allow them to sink into the 15, the hip line, down through the seven, into the earth, on the exhale. And then naturally receive cosmic purified energy in order to let go of more of what you don't need and build even further, expand your consciousness even further. Let it go, everything you no longer need, particularly those thoughts that spin around that are taking you nowhere but into negativity, 
remember what Paul Foster Case is talking about, the surrender of the, the will, the personal will, to the universal mind. Universal mind has much more expanded consciousness, can give us insights that our personal mind may struggle with. Allow that universal mind to help us to permeate our minds, permeate our beings. We're on a journey, I believe, to become one with the universal mind. And life becomes so much easier if we learn to surrender to that which is more expanded than we are at this time. We go to flow with the river like water, down a waterfall really, from head to toe, skin to bone, cleansing, purifying, then the descent and then the Primal fire on the ascent as we receive the cosmic breath, purifying the energy centers in the spine. Helping us release even more. Let it go. Let it go in order to grow. So when you come to the ninth exhalation inhalation, holding the middle finger left or right, slip into neutral, just observe where you be, who you be. Gentle observation. Maybe you're feeling pulses in your left and right middle finger. That's great. Maybe you're not. That's also great. Remember, you have the breath to facilitate more light coming through the four to assist you in releasing and receiving. So now... The third technique that Mary shows us in Self-Help Book 2, page 35. Choose left or right 12 with one hand, and then the other hand goes on the coccyx. I'm choosing my left 12. Yes, Christina, 36 breaths is a technique that Mary adopted moving energy through four sets of nine exhalation inhalations, three and six is nine. Nine in numerology means end of a cycle, beginning of a new. And Mary often took us through four different depths or frequencies of consciousness as she practiced this particular technique. We can do that in future. But for now, just let go with this practice, allowing the energy to move down the front, down, 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 through the hip, to the feet, down, 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 through the earth, even to the crystalline layer. And then as the energy returns, it's cosmically purified breath, going up the spine, cleansing the centers on the main central, joining the energy in the fours, and going back down to the 15s and onward. Eight more times. Okay. 
And if any time any of these techniques become a little uncomfortable, just breathe out more and eventually your muscles will relax more. Or if it's really extremely uncomfortable, take your hand away and hold one of the other techniques. No compulsion here, no, you must. Just follow what is natural for your growth. And in your own time, as you reach the ninth exhalation inhalation, again, just slip into neutral. Just be the observer. Notice what you're experiencing at the 12. Is it feeling more released or do you feel you've got more work to do there? It's okay. Feel what's happening at the coccyx. Observe what's happening in your body and relax. Slip into neutral. Space allows us transformation time. We've opened up some doorways, some energy locks, in order for more energy to transfer between them. And when we pause, we allow that energy to circulate more freely in its own time. So now I'm just to draw the practice to close the fourth set of nine exhalation inhalations. I like to give myself a hug with the thumb underneath the shoulder girdle and the fingers are actually on the, you can't see that, but then on the edge of the shoulder blade. Give yourself a hug if you want. Otherwise, you can return to any one of those three techniques, holding the twelves left and right, holding the middle fingers left or right, or the 12 and the coccyx. You choose, be your own testimony, and then we're going to do hmm, nine more exhalation inhalations to finish the 36 breaths. Here we go. And maybe by now your shoulders are really melting into your hip line, into your feet. And you're feeling that pulse, that rhythm of life. Left and right, up and down. Head to toe, skin to bone. Maybe a sense of expansion. Or maybe not. And that's okay. We are where we are. It is what it is, as Mary would often say. And we accept that. We surrender to the universal will. Don't force it. Don't push it. Let it happen naturally. Well-known lyric from a well-known 70s song, for those of you that were around in the 70s. Yeah. And in time, you'll learn to trust the flow. The journey continues, to quote the name of the Jinshin class. I believe it's an infinite journey where if we allow ourselves to connect to universal mind, we constantly have the opportunity to grow and expand, move boundaries, see things in a more complete way, feel things, connect, grow. Expand. When we contract, it's normally <clears throat> through fear, false evidence appearing real. Unless it's 
a natural caution where we're avoiding something that can harm ourselves or others. And then as soon as we realize we're contracting, we exhale and relax because it's in that dimension that solutions or solutions, S-O-U-L, can more readily be perceived and received. A lot of folks believe if you visualize something, you can more easily attain it. My sense is you can have an idea of what you may feel, but when you surrender or want or need, or when you surrender to the universal mind, you get a greater representation of what you truly would benefit from. So sure, have your needs, but surrender them, let them go. Let the seeds grow. Let the universal mind give you pictures in your dreams. Let it show you a more expanded view of what you're asking for. So congratulations if you've reached your 36 breaths. You're now a different person than who you were 36 breaths ago. Wonderful. And this can be a regular practice. Practice makes progress. See how it feels and operate accordingly. So now I'll just, before we um, wind down, I'll just give you a quick glance of what's happening in the Jinshin world. We'll go to the um, Jinshin page. There we are, www.jsjinc.net, upcoming online events. I don't think there's any more on Zoom study groups, but you can always get the replays. The self-help meditations are now, we are one Monday and Wednesday at two o'clock New York time and harmonize to energize with yours truly at one o'clock New York time. Coming up the following Saturday, <clears throat> with Chu Sarius and yours truly hosting is the breath in Jin Shin Jitsu. Jiro says breath is the ultimate healer. Breath of life is one with our own breath, second death. Um, I love exploring the breath essence and that is why I love to practice the 36 breaths. So this is perfect for me to host and I'm really looking forward to it myself. If you think this is something you'd like to explore further, register today, $35. Five-day basic cinema, a seminar still going on. Part one has been on. Part two begins tomorrow with Anita Willoughby. And I must say, um, I have enjoyed what I have learned so far. Anita Willoughby, and like all our teachers, brings their individual unique approaches to teaching. And I <clears throat> would personally recommend if you like Anita's style of teaching, or you're new to Jin Shin Jitsu, this is a five-day basic course um, and it gives you the foundations. Of course, if you are completely new at this point, you won't be able to do part two until you've done part one. But if you're a reviewer, I thoroughly recommend uh, signing up. There you go for 60. There's a Living the Art class via Zoom beginning November the 14th with Jill Pasquinelli. Jill has been a teacher for a long time and she has her unique style. I've not actually done a Living the Art class with Jill, but based on what I have learned from her in webinars, I think you'll thoroughly enjoy it. She has her own unique interpretations as well as her closeness to Mary's teaching, having studied with Mary like all of our, most of our teachers. And then beneath we have the study groups carrying on here um, with Margaretti and all the way through to um, 2021 by the looks and self-help study groups with Carlos Guterres and Wayne Hackett. And then Jill again, introduction to the core principles of Jin Shin Jitsu 
November the 28th to the 29th. That's an online special topic class. So that looks to be all that's happening. Oh, someone asked, let's go back. Someone asked um, earlier how you could connect with um, other practitioners in your area. Well, let's go back um, to Jinshin. Under practitioners, you can also you always search US or search international, and you can look for um, where there might be practitioners. Locate a search by area code, zip code, um, city, by name. Uh, in the US, I personally love to go to the map, and so if I'm looking for practitioners in Arizona, I click on map, and then I have a look and I see who's teaching, and there we have a list of practitioners who are currently either practicing Jin Shin Jitsu or as indeed in the case of Jenny Felber here, teaching self-help from the self-help books and also Anne Mitzi there, Johnny, Johnny Glasscock up in Sedona, Maggie Norton, Debbie Elman, etc., etc. As we go on, Sarah, Lynn, Carol, Taya. Oh, oh there I am. So, <clears throat> That's one way of finding out practitioners in your area. If you really can't find any practitioners um, that way, why don't you just give me um, a call at the office, 480-998-9331. I'll type that in, 480-998-9331. Or you can email me. Info at jsjinc.com. And I will do my best to check the database to see if there are any practitioners in your area. And I can offer you at least um, their telephone number and perhaps their email, depending on what specifications, whether they've given us the go ahead to share that information and then you can contact and uh, get to know one another. Okay, well, thank you very much everybody for sharing um, with me. So Tianjilok 12 from the Self-Help Book 2 of Mary Burmeister. If you haven't got copies of these books, go along to our store. You can click on these links here. You can get an ebook version now. A replay of this, particular edition along with all the others is going to be available on YouTube as well as being sent within 24 hours. If you're enjoying this, tell your friends about it. They can sign up online um, where I showed you under online events every Friday at the moment, 11 o'clock um, Arizona time and one o'clock New York time. So thank you. Bless you. Take good care. Have a good rest of the day rest of the week. See you next time. Au revoir. Auf Wiedersehen. Cheerio.